Ladies and gentlemen, there in Lake Oswego, Oregon, is the lovely presence of Ronnie Bennett. And uh, Ronnie is not wearing a turban today. No, uh, I'm not. She is in, you, you, what'd you say? You've gone what? Full bore chemo girl. Full, full, <laughs> full bore chemo girl. Do-da, do-da. Uh, yeah, chemo girl. Yeah, it looks good. The hair seems to be growing back from the last time it's you showed. It's growing back. I mean, it's, you know, I was, because it's patchy, it doesn't grow from everywhere. I'd been yeah. shaving it. And what happened is one day a pizza guy was at the door, and I keep a hat by the door so that I put it on and don't scare people to death yeah. by when I answer the door. Yeah. And I completely forgot it. And I opened it up, and I could see him look surprised at me. I mean, people look look like this particularly women and everybody thinks cancer and they're usually right so we took care of our transaction with the pizza and the money and he turned around to go he was very very young he was like 16 or 17 mm -hmm. and he'd already shown his shock at my boldness and he turned around and he said how are you doing that, isn't that nice yes it's very nice i hope you gave him a good tip <laughs> so anyway um it's gotten warm here yeah. And um, I get tired of hats. In the wintertime, I even wore them to sleep because it was cold at night, um, but no more. And so I, and again, I, I sort of forgot when I was going to the grocery store. And when I got there, there's a checkout woman there whose hair is cut like this, too. Mm -hmm. And so we bumped into each other at, at the oranges or something or the tomatoes. Yeah. And, um, I said, look, we've got the same haircut. So we laughed about that. And um, and so now, you know, if I felt like wearing a pretty hat, I would wear a pretty hat. But I'm going to see what happens. I don't think it's going to grow good enough to be a real head of hair. But I'm going to let it go for By now and way, see what happens. Let me mention that, that Ronnie is going through chemotherapy, <laughs> not because she has cancer, but because she likes chemotherapy. <laughs> So, you know, when I, I went out to the, pick up the mail yesterday and mm -hmm. some neighbors yelled, oh, I love the hair, and so on. So, you know, people, people, people figure it out. Yeah, people figure it out. Uh, it, it, no, it, you know, actually, it looks pretty good. Actually, we're twins. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you see, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got more hair. See, I should keep you. my ha cap off, although this is my Chinese cap. Uh, I got China. Chinese army. Uh, uh, but so we've got two old bald-headed people. <laughs> two old bald-headed people. Right, right. And my hair is about as short as yours is. Yours is maybe a little longer, actually. Yes, it is. And I've got these. I've got to fix this. These little tufts over my ear I don't like, so I yeah. have to clip those. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, but it, 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 so you're still doing the chemo, but the hair is growing back. No, no, no. I'm off chemo oh, for two months. Oh, I see. Okay. I've been off chemo for, I guess it's five or six weeks. Maybe there's a couple more to go. Um, and and some hair was growing back. But as I said, it's clumpy. There are places where I'm bald and there's places where hair grows. So yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to have a reasonable head of hair ever again. Yeah. But And by the way, this is much easier, as you must know, yeah. than having hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got a lot of work to do, and uh, and everybody just seems to take it in stride. And so why not? And you know, come winter, I'll wear warm hats again if I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, it looks uh, it's very becoming, very becoming of you. Uh, so uh, how? So you're off the chemo. Why did they stop the chemo? Just because too much chemo? Um, because it does a lot of bad things to you and causes a lot of things to you know not work quite as good as it should and so they first we did a um a, a one I, I have it it's scheduled every other week yeah. so we skipped one and then when i saw the oncologist um he said what about because it was affecting some other um organs in here somewhere yeah uh let's take uh, four treatments off so that's two months uh, so we're skipping four treatments, or is it eight, every other week? Well, how will months. that affect your remission? Well, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, and, and remission isn't a word that anybody uses. There's, 
that doesn't apply. What's the word they use? Well, it, it's more complicated because it's <clears throat> different things happen to different people. In my case, the chemo has shrunk some of the cancer cells and others have they can't even see on the CT scan, but they won't say they aren't there. They're just too small to see is what they Yeah. Yeah. Um so uh so that, you know, I see him in a week or two and we'll figure out what to do. How next. long has it been now? And you know, you're yeah. right to bring this up about um about what's happening in terms of the treatment because I'm worried, you know, pretty soon, another two or three weeks or so, I have another CT scan. The last one, you know, we celebrated big. It was really a good one. Mm -hmm. um, the cancer was way, way, way low. And, uh, you know, now not only has a lot more time gone by, but a lot more time without the chemo that slows the growth of cancer. Mm -hmm. So I'm, a, I'm starting to get worried now, and there's nothing to do about it but live with it. You know, you know I, I, you know, I, I, um, and, and but my situation is nowhere near as dire as yours. But every six months, I go to get a, a blood test to see how my uh, PSA is for my prostate, and uh, I have one coming up, and I always obsess about it. You know, and and what's it going to be do, like? You would obsess more than yeah, I do, but yeah, that but doesn't mean how, I don't how, worry about it uh, quietly. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, that's what I wondered because you're going. You, every, you know, this is like this isn't like grades in college. Okay, this is far more important uh, to yeah. your well-being. You know, there's always a chart that, and it, 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 when they've done the test, mm -hmm. a chart that, you know, when I had before I had the Whipple or anything, had um, the the cancer thing on the chart was way up here. Yeah. After the surgery, it went down to zero. Yeah. Then it went across and went up a little bit, and then it went down a little bit with chemo, and I surely don't want to see it going up again, you know? Yeah. Eventually, I guess it will, but, uh, you know, I, you obsess and I worry. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, and, you know, I went to, I had to go to my regular doctor yesterday just because I had some, I think it's pollen. He thinks it's pollen uh, <laughs> problems. And uh, he, I told him about the prostate thing, and he said, don't worry about it. He said, at your age, uh, it, the chances of having prostate cancer are quite high. And I said, well, I heard they were 70%. He says, I've heard 80. He said, and by the time you reach 90 years of age, if you live that long, it will be 100% chance that you have prostate cancer, <coughs> you know. And he made me feel much better about it. He said, don't even worry <laughs> about it. <You> know? <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we deal with what we have thrown at exactly. us. Exactly. I'm trying to do the best well, I can. Well, you know can. something? You're an inspiration. I, I hate to say this. I don't want you to be a poster child or anything like that. But I'm you, not a poster child for anything. But you yeah. are You are an inspiration. I get, I get notes from people here saying, gee, she's an inspiration, you know, that she's handling this with a certain amount of grace that, that they say, quite frankly, if it happened to me, I don't know if I could. Oh, well, yeah. you know, you're seeing me for 30 minutes on this video through Skype that when I turn it off, you don't know that I throw myself on the ground and weep. Yeah. I'm yep. making that up, but, you know, metaphorically at least. Well, uh, me, I I don't know how I would handle it, but you know me. How would I handle it? I would handle you would it. constantly I ask me if I think that it's gotten worse every day, every <laughs> other five minutes. Oh, boy. When, Ra when Marjorie hears this. She's going to say, oh, it's so like he is today. <laughs> Nothing it, changes. <laughs> nothing changes. You know, only I'll tell you, it, it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. My hypochondria. I don't and, know. And, what, and, and what has it ever gotten you? Nothing. Except <laughs> a, a <laughs> lot of agita, you know. I mean, um, uh, I, you know, I, I just, I, I want to be healthy till I'm 100. You know, here's the point. If I live to be 100, I'm not going to be terribly healthy no matter how I want to be. I mean, my mother was healthier than you or I could possibly expect to be, and she had like, uh, what do you call it, not, not Alzheimer's, but uh, dementia. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm thinking, if I had to live with dementia, I don't know if I'd want to keep on living. You well, know? you wouldn't know. Well, yeah, you don't know. I mean, 
Uh, or at least after a certain point, you wouldn't know anymore. Yeah, I mean, and she died. She died, kind of of dementia because she just at one point just quit eating. Many people do. When it's time to go, they stop eating. Yeah, she did, she hit a hundred, and I figure she was like the loneliness of the long distance runner. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. Gets right up to the finish line and says, "Ah, the hell with it," you mm -hmm. know. Um, uh, she, I think, hit the finish line and went, okay, I'm out of here because I'm not going to make it to 200. <laughs> God, that's a funny number to hear. I, mean, I remember <laughs> I was in Macy's. I was in Macy's buying, I don't know, a jacket or something like that. And I get a call. And it's uh, my business manager, Gary. And uh, he says, the doctor wants to talk with you. And I get on the line. He says, listen, your mother is refusing to eat. She's not really eating. We try to feed her. We could feed her with uh, intravenously, keep her alive indefinitely, who knows how long. He says, but really, I think she wants to go. And he says, what do you think we should do? And I said, if she doesn't want to eat, she doesn't want to eat. And within a week, I think she was dead. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a horrible decision to make when you're standing in the middle of Macy's buying a jacket. But... You know, it was my feeling was she hit a hundred. I'm gonna feel sorry she's gone, but I'm not gonna feel sorry for her. I feel she lived a good life, a long life. You know, Mazel Tov. Now I was thinking about Anderson Cooper because his mother. Oh, yesterday his mother died. Yeah. Yeah, his mother died. Um, Gloria Vanderbilt, uh, who had her name on everybody's ass in America at one point. Uh, and he, you know, he was kind of crying and sad and so on. And I'm going, she was, I think she was 96. And I went, you can, I don't know what you cry about. Cause I couldn't cry, you know, because I said I had her longer than most people ever have their parents, you know? And I, I felt that crying would be selfish on my part. For all the people well, that we all deal with with grief differently. I mean, you can't you can't say one way is right and another way isn't right. I mean, I, I, I lost I lost my. I mean, certainly we yeah. miss the people we love whenever they leave, and uh, and you know, as I said, we each grieve in our own way. It's uh, and it's all all of it's okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like you remember when my you remember when my father died. Yes. And um, he was fifty nine. That oh, I was very oh, sad yeah. about. In fact, you told me that I was crying in my sleep that night or something like that, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very sad to me. But at 100, with my mother going, I didn't feel the same thing. Of course, I didn't like my mother as much as I like my father, but, you know, <laughs> she gets that joke. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Your mother had, oh, this is good. Let me, let me, this little story. I remember once we were at your house, this is, I think before we were married, but mm. hanging out. Yeah. And we needed to drive to the East Bay from Marin County for some damn cousin's bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And it was a long drive, and we knew we had to leave by about 11 to get there at the right time. And so, you know, you and I and your dad are off somewhere in the house getting dressed and ready to go. And we come upstairs, and your mother is still in her robe. It's going on 11 o'clock, and she's taking all the dishes out of the cupboards to clean the cupboards. And your dad, I can't do his accent right, but his Ruth, Ruth, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and she had no sense of time, just drove everybody nuts. And listen, let me ask you a question. You said my father's accent. Uh -huh. Do you know I never heard an accent in my father? I, I, well, you never heard his, you know, you, I mean, that's all you ever heard. To me, that's how your father sounded to, from to the time me, you were born. Yeah, but to me, he didn't have an accent. And you say he had an accent. How thick was it? Moderately. Not big deal. Not yeah. difficult. Not, no difficulty understanding him. Oh, right. He, he couldn't, the thing about your mother's name, Ruth, is that he didn't say a TH sound the way American English does. It was more German. Oh, okay. Um, See, and that I, was the biggest one I remember. I, I never heard that. I never heard an accent with my father. Never perceived of him as having an accent. You know? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I, I, it, and of course my mother didn't have one because she, she had, if she had one, it was from the Bronx. Yeah. Oh, I thought she grew up in the Lower East Side. No, she grew up in the Bronx. 
uh, and uh, but you know, I mean, uh, the thing is about uh, Alzheimer's, for instance. When you die, do you know you've died? You know, is or is your passing just something that yeah maybe maybe Alzheimer's for the person who has it, in many ways is a blessing, if they're going to go. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you're not. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're asking if somebody knows when they die. Are they as aware of their mortality once they get Alzheimer's? Oh, I. Who would know? They can't answer the questions. <laughs> well, I mean, but I, I, well, the reason I'm asking you is because you kind of study old age and, and you've I maybe run into some statistics about it, you know? I don't know anything about I don't think anybody knows. Nobody's come back and told us what dying is like yet, you know? I mean, there are the near-death experiences where some funny-looking alien takes you up and I don't know what they do with you in their spaceship. Um, you know, you can believe that or not. It's well, they they, an, they supposedly <laughs> anal probe you. I don't know what aliens have with people's asses, but they always anal probe them. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't take that as scientific fact. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's the, it's the great mystery of life. Is it, is it the end of everything for an individual consciousness? Or does some part of us go on somewhere? None of us know. We'll have to wait and see. I suppose I should not be a fearful of death, but look at it as a great adventure. It is. It's a great adventure. I've always thought that, but more so since the psilocybin. Yeah. That I'm, I'm more sanguine about it. And she took. Let's just <laughs> let people know. Who haven't heard this. You took psilocybin, which is a. Um, what's the? Uh, what's, it's a psychedelic. It's a psychedelic. Uh, and it, um, it, it, you, you took it, and it made you come to terms with death better, right? Is that yep. is that how you would describe it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there were other things involved, but but that was the important one that I was most interested in facing. Yeah. Um, because it was, I was after I was diagnosed, I was just terrified all the time. Yeah. And I'm not anymore. Um, one of the things that's changed since that session, which was last December, is although I've meditated off and on all my life, I've never really taken it seriously. And this time, I spend quiet time where I sit quietly. I wouldn't call it meditation because I'm just not disciplined enough to do that kind of thing. But I sit quietly and let thoughts go through my head and watch them go through and think about them. And maybe I, I, you know, I only spend 10 or 15 minutes at it a day, but it obviously, and what comes up a lot um, is my impending death. And, uh, and it's not scary anymore. It's, I, it, it, it seems like the other side of the coin, that one side of a coin is living and the other side is being dead. And I don't know what the second side is about or like, or if I will e even ever know. I mean, it's, it's, it's as likely to me that our consciousness ends with death as it is that it might go on. And I have no way of knowing till I get there. And it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, as I say, I've always had that great fear of death. As I, we were talking about my father, and one time I said to him, Dad, I said, I have a great fear of death. And he said, well, you, you know, you shouldn't fear it because you've been there before. Your dad said that? Yeah. He says, you've been... What a nice he, answer. I said, I can't understand what it's like to not know that I exist. And he says, you've been there before. You, you know, and you, and you certainly, you know, don't fear that. And so for the rest of my life, I feared about what it was like before I was born. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I mean, it was a very wise thing he said. You're really basically going back to whatever stuff you were originally, you know, right. before you existed. I've recently come to think, and this doesn't mean I think that it's necessarily real, but entertaining the idea, <clears throat> since I don't really, ha I don't have a religion really, but entertaining the idea that there is something afterwards, and that there is some some place, some little corner of the universe where I belong, and I will be. I mean, I I don't know that that's true. It's just fun to think about <laughs> what was that albert brooks movie something for your life um 
in which you, you, you go to uh, the halfway place between heaven and hell, and they judge where you should go, whether you should go to heaven or whether you should go to hell. And going to hell was based on the fact, how much fear did you have in life? How much fear? How much fear, yeah. And so uh, 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 he, he, he has a problem because he's, he's just a very fearful person like I am, you know. Uh, and it, it, was, um, it made me think about that, you know, that maybe our life should be measured by how much joy we give ourselves and not how much pain we give ourselves. And I give myself a lot of pain, and I feel bad about that. I feel well, I, I don't I haven't lived my life to its fullest, you know. Well, old. you could start now. Well, I could start now, but and then I get really depressed and go. It's too late, you know. I mean, it's not too late. Ever. I mean, I have to be. I have to live with the knowledge. You know, I, you're living with the knowledge that you have something that's maybe going to kill you, or maybe it will probably kill you, but we don't know when. Okay. Right. I live with the fact that right now my health seems to be okay, all right? But that I could probably drop dead tomorrow before I heard before that you. knock on your desk. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, 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 the, I, could, I could, you know, die tomorrow, get a heart attack or whatever, and be gone before you. So there's no... I'm going to tell you something about that yeah. statement. Yeah. A lot of people have said that to me. It's just as much. I could just die tomorrow long before you. Nobody's given you a death sentence. It's You're absolutely thing. right. You look, look at it differently. Hey, I'm not going to argue with you on that one, okay? But nevertheless, uh, you know, we don't know when we're going to go. I mean, I, I hear about people I know who, who, are, who are dead now. You know, every week I get news of somebody I knew who died, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. John. You know, if you live long enough, that just keeps happening. Dr. John, <laughs> who we knew years ago, dead, you know? And, and I go... You know, maybe this is just maybe maybe this is a sign that hey, you're lucky because all these other people are dying, but you're still here. So why don't you rejoice in the fact that you're still here? I think you're handling. How do you know you're still here? Maybe this is the other side. Oh God! Now you've given me something else to worry about. <laughs> God damn you! Yeah, yeah. What if I don't exist? Maybe if what if what if I'm somebody else's imagination? Yes. You know. Yes, you're, you're 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 one of the what do, what do they call them extras in somebody well, else's dream. Let me dream. ask you this. Well, let me ask you this. When you look back on your whole life, didn't it seem to go by awfully fast? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm writing about that for tomorrow. And yet, and yet, it went by very slowly. Very what? Very. It went by very slowly. But when you look back on it, it went by really fast. Not when you were a little kid. That's the difference between old people and little kids. Yeah. Little kids, if their birthday is next week, it might as well be 10 years from now. Oh, they can't if, stand if waiting. You, if you ask a little kid how old they are, they will tell you up to the month of how old they are. Yes, you I know. am five and a half. Or I'm you five know, and six months or five <laughs> and seven months. But when you get to be uh, nine, 79, I ain't saying I'm 80 till I'm 80. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting I'm 78 and I started I've heard myself say a couple of times I'm almost 80 well that's good because you are almost 80 I am two yeah. more years when's, two your, when, when's your birthday since I always forgot it before so why should I start remembering it now why start now <laughs> was last, two, two months ago okay so you're, two months ago. you're about a year and a half younger than I am yes oh younger than I am yeah. Yes. So I always like yeah. the young chicks, you know. <laughs> always like the young chicks. Wow. You know, I mean, I I just think that uh, I agree with the people who write me and say you're an inspiration, you know, and and uh, whether you want to be or you don't want to be, just your existence and the way you're living your life right now, you are. So get used to it, damn it. Get used to what? Being. Uh, 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 a, a person that people admire for the, her strength and for her outlook on this kind of thing and being an inspiration to them. I think that's really nice. And if it's true and it really helps people, I am just... Give me the Jewish word for this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kvel or something. Kvel, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um. I think that's wonderful if that's true. 
but it's just I'm just reporting on the blog and in our conversations. I'm just reporting on what goes on. I'm not saying that any of it is 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 set in stone. Yeah. I'm guessing on a whole lot of stuff. Right. Or just making things up to get by for a while, maybe sometimes. I'm yeah. not sure, always. Um, and, you know, we all just do the best we can when we're in... I would call this a relatively dire circumstance. And in those... When those things happen, we do the best we can, it seems to me. Well, I hope that when, if it happened to me, I would have the grace that you have and deal with it as you have dealt with it. I don't see you in your private times when you're on the floor crying. But, <laughs> but I do know I get that laugh every now and then. And by the way, your cough is kind of gone. You're, you're uh, yeah, a little bit. A little, it comes and goes. Yeah. It comes anyway. and goes. I did a whole lot of tests yesterday. Yeah. Two hours worth of tests about my breathing because I can't walk very well because of the breathing. And so I see a pulmonologist in a couple of weeks, but first they had to do all those tests and we'll see yeah. what they can do for me. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't. I, I, what do you know? I suddenly have lost my uh, my cursor here. Eh. Damn, ah. it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Hmm. Well, I don't know how I'm going to stop this interview. <laughs> You'll have to edit the end off. This is a real problem here. Hold on a second. Well, okay. Uh, stay there while I get another battery. Oh, there we go. I got the battery did something here. Did it? Did, uh, there we go. Okay. Now I can Do end the interview. you want to see my new steampunk glasses, sunglasses? Sure. Put them on and then we got to go because I want to be able to stop this while my... Uh... What do you think? Oh, my God. You look... You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just stay that way. That's Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. I had a good time.